Hey, so today we're gonna talk about vehicle emergencies. Pretty much everyone these days has a cell phone, can call somebody to come help you, but in the event that you don't have someone to call or maybe your phone's dead or you lost it or you don't have the money to call a wrecker service, it's important for you to know what to do to get yourself out of that situation. So I'm just gonna run through a few small emergencies, not like car accidents, but like emergencies that might leave you stranded somewhere. So the number one most important thing to remember in any emergency, no matter what it is, pay attention to your surroundings. We all know there's crazy shit going on in the world right now. There are bad people everywhere. I'm not just talking about that. Obviously, pay attention to your surroundings and who's around you that could be potentially dangerous, but also it's important for you to pay attention to where you are and how what the situation is. If you're about to have to change your tire, make sure you pull off on level ground. Make sure that you're far enough off the highway that people flying down the road, texting and driving, aren't gonna accidentally swerve and hit you. Make sure that you aren't parked on a hill so when you jack the vehicle up, it doesn't try to roll and fall off the jack. Or make sure that you're not pulling off into some dead animal and you won't be able to get to everything properly because who wants to be in the middle of that? By the way, today's episode is sponsored by TFD Off-Road. There's a link in the description for their YouTube channel if you want to go check them out. So, one of the probably most common emergency situations, especially if you live on a dirt road, is flat tire. I can't even tell you how many flat tires I've had in my lifetime. A lot of vehicles these days tell you when your tires are low. If you're paying enough attention to your vehicle, you can kind of feel it when it gets low. But, either way, if you happen to have a flat tire, we're going to pull off the road in hopefully a spot that's not muddy or nasty or unlevel or whatever. We're gonna put our flashers on as we're pulling off the road, not after we're parked. I'm sure we all learn these things in driver's ed, but you know, if it's not something you deal with every day, it's not really something that you think about. You're just like panic mode what am I gonna do next? So it's important to stay calm, especially if you have your kids in the car because you get all riled up, they're just gonna get wild too and you know, just makes the whole situation way more stressful than it needs to be. Once you are sure that you're in a safe spot, jack placement can be kind of intimidating if you don't know what you're looking for. Most cars these days come with something that looks like this. It also probably has the lug wrench built into the handle. This little notch right here has a specific spot in the car that it's supposed to go. Sometimes there's a little diagram on the side of the jack to show you exactly where to place it. So there's no guesswork. You're not gonna hit anything that's gonna break or jack it up on something that's gonna get messed up. If your jack looks more like this and doesn't have any indicators of where to place it, what we're looking for is part of the frame. Before we jack anything up, we want to make sure we set the emergency brake and obviously that the vehicle is in park. It's also probably a little bit safer, makes everything easier if you bust all the lug nuts loose before you try to jack it up. So, once we have everything a little bit loose, we're going to jack it up just high enough where you can get the tire easily off the vehicle. You don't need a whole lot of room, it just needs to be up off the pavement. If you are driving a pickup, your spare is usually up under the bed somewhere, or if you drive a car, it's usually inside the trunk. So we're gonna put the new tire on, tighten the lug nuts as tight as you can. Please remember that a donut or spare tire is not meant to be a full-time tire. This is meant to get you to the tire shop, get you out of that emergency situation, where you can get your original tire patched or replaced. The next situation I wanna talk about is having a dead battery. Whether you left your lights on or, I mean, for the most part, all these newer vehicles shut themselves off to avoid that. So it may not even be worth talking about, but I feel like it's important for everyone to know how to jump a car. Jumper cables can also be kind of intimidating and dangerous unless you know how to use them. These are a little bit rusted because they've been riding around in the back of my truck for a while, but they are color coded to match your battery. So. We're going to, first of all, make sure that these two ends don't touch while we hook the other ends up. Then we're gonna hook the red on the red and the black on the black terminal. Make sure you get a good connection and it's touching metal. After you have one vehicle safely hooked up, we're gonna grab the other two ends and hook them to the jump car. 
Once you have both vehicles hooked up to the jumper cables, leave the jump car running. Rev up the engine a little bit if you have to, give it a little bit of time before you try to start the dead vehicle. Once the dead one is started, you can safely unhook the jumper cables. Once again, don't let them touch each other. If you're having battery problems often, it's probably time for a new battery or a slightly bigger problem. The third emergency I wanna talk about is if your vehicle overheats. This is where the monthly checkup kind of comes into play because you could hopefully catch that before it leaves you stranded. But if your antifreeze is leaking or your belt that we mentioned in the last video is frayed or cracked or snaps off of there, your vehicle can overheat. There's really nothing you can do besides sit there and wait. As you're driving, it's kind of a good idea to glance down at your gauges every now and then. If this gauge is high and you're not to a safe space to pull off the road yet, you can turn your heater on full blast to kind of get you a little bit farther. Sometimes it happens so fast, you don't really have time to do anything about it. Whatever you do, do not open the radiator cap until the vehicle is completely cool. This is gonna take a minute. So whatever you had planned, wherever you were headed to, it's just gonna have to wait because there's no way to cool it down faster. So if your antifreeze is low, you can put fresh clean distilled water in it in case of an emergency. But if both of these things look fine, you can see liquid when you open the radiator cap and your belt looks fine. It's probably a deeper issue that you're gonna have to hire a mechanic to fix. Let's talk about your emergency toolkit. These are just a few things that you should keep in your car at all times in the event that you should need them. I do have all of these items listed in my Amazon storefront, but you can just as easily pick them up at Walmart or wherever. So we wanna check and make sure that your car does come with a jack. Of course, we already talked about jumper cables. It's also not a bad idea to buy an actual four-way. Gives you a little bit more leverage, different size lug nuts. But I also like to carry a few other things in my truck, not really for emergencies, but you just never know when you might need them. The multi-tool hammer with multiple sizes of screwdrivers inside. A tire gauge of some kind, this is just a cheap one. I like to carry an extra knife, even though I usually have one in my pocket. A pair of channel locks, don't ask me why, they're just my favorite. Tape measure might also come in handy. A pair of gloves, also a chain could be helpful if you ever happen to be in a situation where you could get stuck so if you're still here, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from this video. I'm sure there are a lot more emergency situations I could talk about, but those are the three basic ones that I've run into most commonly that you can somewhat easily get yourself out of.